From the art of the deal to keeping it real. Keeping it real. Live from the Simply Vegas studios, it's the Power Move with John Gafford. Back again, back again, back again, back again for another episode of the Power Move. It's more like an experience. Yeah, the, you know what it is? The Power Move experience. Power move. Don't say episode. Episode is Episode's what, terrible. That's what yeah. Star Wars did. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I screwed the whole thing up. See, Colt wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <laughs> speaking of Colt, my, well, once again, speaking of me, my name is John Gafford. I am your host. Welcome to the Power Move. It's the show where we talk about business, we talk about life, we talk about lots of things that we can try to do to make your life a little bit better. To the left of me, as always, is the one, the only Colt. The, the real bo- Dark Vader. The real Dark Vader. The <laughs> Bulgarian the mongoose Amadan. Give it up for the What's give it up, up for the everybody. The, everybody. Polo the Polo <laughs> Assassin. The Polo Assassins. <laughs> I was watching something today or last night with Polo Assassins. <laughs> of course you are. And on the couch across from us, Chris the Counselor Connell. How are you, Counselor? How are you? Living the dream. Living the dream indeed. Today on the show, man. You know, I, I gotta go. I got a speaking engagement tomorrow. And that engagement is about, they, they called me up and said, we want you to talk about how to recession-proof your business in the real estate space. And oddly enough, as we've been doing these small chapters from my upcoming book, Escaping the Drift, today's chapter is kind of planning to win is what we're going to talk about anyway. And there's a lot of what I'm going to talk about tomorrow night in this speech that I wanted to kind of lay out here as well. And we can discuss and we can talk about that today. But man, it's been a been a crazy week. The elections are over. Who's glad about that? Bow, bow, bow. Uh, <laughs> my, um, thank God. I can actually go through my mail without having 40 different things. And I can not look at my yeah. text messages of vote for me. Mailers were aggressive. Yeah, they Super were aggressive. aggressive. I mean, I mean. I stopped my mailing, my marketing stuff for three or four months. Really aggressive. I do. Yeah. Just yeah. gets lost into it. I, I got to tell you, I was very confused about the election results here in Nevada. Because I kind of thought, because you really kind of think that a lot of those votes, a a lot of the blue votes here come from from, from like culinary. If you look at Clark County, the culinary union, a lot of those votes come from the unions that are based here in Clark County, a lot. But when you saw how they unpredictedly swung some of these races to the blue side, were you surprised that it didn't also swing the governor's house? Was that a surprise? Yes, well, so, you know, people vote in secret. You know, I always yeah. have this whole thing where um, a lot of times people say they're going to go one way, they get in that booth, and they vote the other way, how they yeah. really want. That's how I think, honestly, Trump got in. I think he spoke to people that couldn't publicly admit they liked him. Yeah. They were like, no, I don't like other things, so I'm going to go this way because no one can hold me accountable in a booth, right? Mm-hmm. Now, with Sisolak, I think he had the, um, call it fair or unfair, Mm-hmm. He was before the state during the pandemic. Now, I personally wasn't that offended with the shutdowns because I thought we opened up fairly quick relative to a lot of other people. But there were some people that thought, well, if it wasn't the Florida rate of you know, reopening, that was you know, malfeasance. So you think, because what I think happened is I think culinary hung him out to dry for the shutdowns. I think they that's, still voted blue for everybody else, yep. but they hung him out to dry for the shutdowns. That could that's very well happened. be it. Because like I said, they were like, no, you shut us down. That was bad. Yeah, you're gonna face the brunt of it. But I don't. I mean, I. That's the worst. Fine. That, that was the worst you, you job think, ever. Like, well, to be thrown as a governor or anything during okay. COVID, I'd hate to. Not saying it's he did tough. the worst job. I would hate to be thrown. That was a no win situation. So, I think it was a no win. How much money do you think Sisolak has made from being governor? Oh God! Don't they all just make it? I mean, it's just. They all just make it. I mean, you hear. You hear, and again, I don't know how much of this is true, but you hear things, or you, you just you hear things like the location of parking lots prior to the LLCs. Approval. LLCs were open. <laughs> yeah, prior to the now. I the don't stadium. think that that's not my yeah, yeah, opinion. Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying, but you hear things right. like opinions of Connell Law, like land, 702 Connell, nope. do not represent the opinions <laughs> no, no, of anybody, or there's no, no implications. No, no. no, but I, but I think the biggest one I always hear is the land around the stadium prior to the stadium being entitled. I the, think I hear a lot of that. I've heard a lot about that during the um, uh, opportunity zones. Yes, a lot of a lot of that's that as been well. going all these on politicians forever. were buying up all the land yeah. around the opportunity zones because they were the ones approving final opportunity yep. zones. And if you go look at who owns them, it's both red and blue. 
Yeah. yeah. No, they, they just know where I was going and they get the first bite of the apple. Look at the land Harry Reid owned. Look I, at the I places. was just going to bring him you up. Know, like, come I on. didn't want to say it, but yeah. go look at everything magically happening around his <laughs> yeah. land. Just, I just, you know, if I ever if I ever got into politics, my dream would be to, to that, that prime minister of England just do do what she did, man. Like, what, was that 14 days on job? But I'm out. I'm taking my pension and going to the sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 14 days and out. I mean, Brilliant. I, I love that it's, cut of her where she's like, I am not a quitter 14 days later. Thank you. Out. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Yep. This is not what I thought it was going to be. I mean, I'm on my way. Would, <laughs> I, that'd be a tough situation because you put yourself in that situation and you're not taking advantage of stuff like that. Maybe you wouldn't. Yeah. I, um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because there's a certain part Would you part now, of you. though, not being in politics, if you heard something's going to maybe go down, would you not jump on it? As, well, a business as long as it wasn't illegal. Right. But well, I have no problem getting it. Well, they say that, that Paul Pelosi has outpaced the best hedge funds in the world, like four to one. That should, and I know it does, but <laughs> you know, you, you should not be able, I, I'm sorry, that's one of those things yeah, you where should be, you should not be able to trade, you should not be able to hone public equities for that period of time. I don't care. Like it's well, a blind trust. But you, you know, I, by, or, <laughs> I told you my opinion. I think we should pay Congress people 10 million a year. Yep. That's all you can But make. if you literally make a penny outside of that, there is like a hanging squad outside waiting to th- noose you up. Well, I, saw, I heard the one time they said that they should, all members of Converse, Congress should be like NASCAR drivers where they have like the sponsorships have to wear the logos yeah. of all yeah. the sponsors, people that biggest donors all over them no, as they go there, to the, There's, there's 500 the members of, con, there's, you know, 500 and what, 535 or whatever. Yeah. You know, you take 500 by 10 million, it's like, it's really not a lot of money. Mm. No. Like we're not talking, we're talking about cost of a couple of missiles, mm-hmm. right? And you start breaking Stop that down. On but our we need military. those America. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm pro America, so I don't like cost of missiles. Uh, but no, you take that, you pay them ten million dollars each. I'm serious. Make it so that it's like NFL head coach wages, right? Mm-hmm. Like ten million a year. But that is literally it. But let me and t- we're going to audit you but, forever. But, but, no, but let me tell you something. The truest thing you'll hear. That won't be enough. No, they get the ten. They want eleven. They get eleven. They want twelve. It's a funny thing, man. You get around those people. I mean, I look at I, I look at the the change. But you can attract the top talent in the world with ten. Well, but here's the point, though. But I'm saying this: you look at the difference. Power is more than money. It's more. It's oh, yeah. it's a, it's, a, it's an absolute drug, and it's absolutely addictive. Right. I look at you know, people ask me all the time because <clears throat> you know, look, we weren't golfing buddies, but I did spend a, a decent amount of time around the man to kind of get an idea of who he was even when the cameras weren't rolling, but being around Trump, that's a totally different human being that I was around before the whole presidential shit started. I mean, and keep in mind, even back then, he was kind of a, I mean, he was obviously a giant egomaniac, that's who the guy was, but this is a whole nother level of who that guy is. And it's, um, and power corrupts, man. I, I don't think there's any way, it's like, you know, in, like glad, in Gladiator, why was Marcus Aurelius going to give it to uh, Maximus? Because right. he, he was the only one he could trust with giving it back to the people because right. everybody else would be corrupted by the power. 100%. And, and Same I'm with Faith, Queen Phoenix. I, I, don't think, I don't think there's any dollar figure that stops that. But, but again, you get a certain amount of power. You, I'm not, and I'm not saying you're not going to get your pork where it comes. I'm right, not right. saying you're not going to get favors when you're you know out of office. That would do? The minute it's out of in office, though, you're fucking done. And guess what? The people won't want to be in there for 40 years. I was yeah. just going to say, you're going to make it so. Go run a hedge fund. Go there. do yeah. whatever. I don't yeah. I don't care, but there should be a hard stop on things like that. Well, that I was just, my biggest thing with the whole COVID thing. Like, my biggest thing with the government was how much they made on freaking stocks before it shut down. Yeah. Like, with all those people. I thought yeah. that was the biggest BS out of everything that mm-hmm. happened. There was one guy sitting here, though. I don't remember his name, but he said that uh, all these members of Congress own stock in Pfizer, and it wasn't true. I wouldn't fact check that. And it yeah. Was, Huh. But they wait, still made money. Wait, you mean something somebody said in here that's on the internet wasn't true? No. no. But, but like I said, I always want to put, I always want to correct, and I always want there yeah. to be an Just honest like narrative. Not they, they mostly own tech thousand. stocks, and they yeah. mostly, because they, Congress shows what they own. They're supposed yeah, to be. To. But the Pelosi's, oh, my husband's brother's cousin seems to, you know, buy a lot of shares in this upstart company that, yeah. you know, whatever. So a, a lot of it's energy, tech, very, very big stuff, right? right. Which is fine. If you want to have a pension, blind trust that you can't touch it. You can't actively yeah, trade but it's, it. Yeah, but it's also stuff that also legislation can, can move the needle with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Government contracts can move the needle with. Right. It absolutely. Is. So, yeah. But, man, so let's back, you know what? Enough talking about the, the lords and ladies of the land. Let's talk about us common folk. Well, I'm a lord. You're a lord. Yeah. Well, Scottish lord. That's true. I forgot. I, so what's your? 
What are you, well, what are you talking about? This peasant? Well, yeah, okay. Let's talk. Let's, let's, let's talk about your people, peasant. Colt. You peasant. My people. <laughs> Back to your people, Colt. You peasant. Yeah. Don't talk to a lord. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, sorry, but you know this recession thing is looming everywhere. You see, it's it's going. It's coming, and and things are happening in a way where, you know, you're going to have. You, you need to prepare to win through this. You can't just hope things come out good. You've got to take some some definitive steps to survive this. Now, I was asked to speak at this event, like I said, tomorrow night. And they said, you know, we want you to give talk for 30 minutes and then break down, you know, kind of your experience through the last downturn, because when the last market fell apart, yes, I was doing this 16 years ago when the shit hit the van. And uh, they wanted me to, uh, to kind of talk about how I got through that. Now, I thought it would be a wasted 30 minutes if I told them how to you know, start doing BPOs, how to start doing short sales, how to get in with, go to REO conventions, start doing that because I don't think any of that is coming back at the scale it did. And I'll give you the reasons why later. But I think the principles that I used during that time, really three principles that, that I used every day got me through them. The first one was I got really educated, I got really organized, and I got really intentional with everything that I did. And I think if you can do that with those three things, I think you'll be fine coming out the other end of this recession. So we'll talk about this in, in the scope of if you are in the real estate business, but if you're not, you, you need to be in any business watching the same thing. So for example, when it starts out, when you're talking about being educated, like in your business, now the good, the good news is uh, car wrecks for the, for the legal business, those things don't follow trends. That's right, and it's, that's why they're hard to plan around too. Yeah. They don't follow trends. They don't follow those things. But I would think that from the angle of your business, let's break your business down first, there are things that are going to follow some trends. For example, if you wanted to advertise, I'm going to guess that that might get a little cheaper because as people's budgets get cut and people start to shrink their budgets for all businesses across the scope, there's going to be some advertising opportunities that you may not have done a year ago that now would be on the table. Except in car accidents. Except in car accidents? Yeah, it is absolutely. We're the most expensive market in America, I believe. For, for that? For marketing, advertising. Someone's always willing to come pick up the, the next There's an open billboard. Somebody will, somebody yeah, will throw there, themselves yeah, on. Yeah, there's a billboard. Someone's throwing it on. Wow. It's so, the most amazing <laughs> thing ever. I, somebody, I, every time someone comes in town, that's the number one thing they I say. Know. How many? It's yeah, very, very yeah. particular. I, that's because I just think we have 40 million people that come here and drive here like crazy people. Uh -huh. Right? Like yeah, two don't million pay people attention. live here. There's a lot of accidents here. And don't pay attention. Well, real estate, you know, for us, it's all about watching the trends. Right. It's all about watching what happens. So on a daily basis, I'm very involved with MLS data, which is how many houses are on the market, how many new houses come on the market, the average day is on market, how many price decreases. Do you, do you update yourself on that every day? Or yeah, I look at it every morning. Every single day. I take a quick peek every morning just to see where the market's Galmar's going because you have to good. feel it. There's a feel to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can look at the reports that LVR puts out as well. But but you, you got to have a feel for it. And if you're not looking at it every day, it's impossible to feel it. You know, when you look at it every day, you can feel the numbers move. It's kind of like when you watch your stocks, right? right? You can, you're like, you kind of have a feel for what's going on. But I watch that data. I watch, uh, I look at the foreclosure notice of default data to see how many people are getting a notice of default. I look for, uh, I look at mortgage rates every day because that's what's having the biggest effect on us right now. I want to know what the, what the best rates are today. Right. But not to mention that, but I'm also well-versed on any new programs that come down the pike from our lender that we own. I mean, I want to know what those programs are because the reason you need to get educated in any business, especially with real estate, is... If you think you're in the house selling business, you're not. You're no longer in the house selling business. You are in the problem solving business. Because, you know, I said this the other day where, you know, there's, it's easy to sit on the sidelines. It's easy to sit on the beach and yell to people that have to sail out into those waters. You're going to drown. I mean, it's easy to be that guy. It's easy to tell Josh McDaniels how to coach. Yeah, be the beacon of hope. <laughs> be the new playbook for Josh McDaniel. Be something. Good Lord. Help that dude. Um, yeah. Oh, man. He's be something for yet. him. No, there was a there was a vote of confidence for him the other day. There was. Seems like players like him. Anyway, I didn't want to disrail you, but I just was sitting there on the ride home listening to the owner, Mark Davis, saying Rome wasn't built in a day. It's only been nine games. 
Um, <laughs> hey, I just wanted to work that in here somewhere, just just to listen, annoy the Ro- people. Rome was not built in a day, but it also wasn't built on on, on kindling and sticks yeah. and 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 <laughs> flooded and plans. flooded and and, and, and built. Well, I mean, on flood zones and, and and built in the exact same place where that when it was built there last time, it fell apart as well. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'd say this, but when same architect, same plans, new builder doesn't change anything. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> it's time to for new. A new ownership would be very welcome, I think. That's so good. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to disrail you, John. Oh, no, you're fine. No, you derail, is that what it feels like to be rail? This rail? Yeah, that's a, yeah, Colt. That's what it feels like talking that's to you all the time. <laughs> but again, Colt, what's a, your favorite sandwich? There we go. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, we already go did for that. But speaking of like polo assassin, <laughs> like what's the richest sport there is? Would polo be it? F one be it? Like richest to play? Just the richest like. I, I think cricket? it's where I think it's where you hunt humans on your, <laughs> yeah, oh, on your random island yeah, in Qatar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the world's most dangerous game. I'm telling you guys, if <laughs> we didn't believe in the afterlife, that might be a fun thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I just, <laughs> Sorry, John, you were saying. I, my apologies. I don't, what else you watch? I, I don't know what I was saying. I, I don't watch know. I don't, I don't know what happened. Ready to. Uh, I'll tell you what I watch. I watch <laughs> car. No, no, no. I'm being dead serious. I'm bringing it back to what you're okay, saying. Okay, good. I, I watch car delinquencies. <laughs> like yeah. you can get oh, a you? huge amount off of car scene. There are certain things that are so easy to watch. The foreclosures, the rates, mm-hmm. the 10 year yield, right? Yeah. But cars. You can watch how many people become late on their cars yep. is a real good indicator. Really of how good well, indicator. those are you know, you know look, it, all of those are all of those are performance indicators that are that are going to affect your business. I mean, you've yep. got to find whatever those are for your particular business. You've got to understand what they are, and you've got to get your hands on them every day. Really good point. I was driving over. I, I was in the market for a new truck. Mm-hmm. I went over to a undisclosed dealership. I won't say which one it was. Okay. And I drove around the lot, and I looked, and it still had the gouge price on it msrp is 45 but um six thousand dealer markup oh man on the window still playing that november game? 2022 uh, you're, you're still playing that game i've been looking i've never seen another dealer every other dealer is going four thousand off msrp five yeah. that's the shift in that index performance th- th- that, yeah so that cool. index yeah. colt is 100 percent right the over they were j- gouging what when the chips were in no supply people were selling used vehicles for more than new mm-hmm. right so now i'm watching that trend because i was looking and that was in the market yeah. right i wouldn't needed a new truck so i've been watching and watching found a great deal this weekend and pulled the trigger on it so no i, lo- I love that um you, you've got to stay on the trends mm-hmm. you, you got to know what they are they lost and- a client because i'm like you you'd want to charge me more yeah you're never gonna than get that. msrp today you're never yeah. gonna get that but if you don't understand the trends and the trends are more than just information. They're a roadmap to show you what to do, to show you which way to go. For example, a million years ago, during the first crash when I was here and the bottom fell out and we were like trying to figure out what to do, you know, I started noticing this, all these things called short sales pop up. I had no clue what they were, but I started doing a little bit of research and I realized, oh, this is what happens when you have no equity and need to sell your house. This is what happens. So I decided to get super educated on short sales. And I found what I thought was the best guy. And this guy, I'll tell you what happened. This dude was, was having a seminar downtown at the plaza. Hmm. And he claimed to be a loss wow. mitigator from Beach or from, from a big bank. And he was having a seminar on how to do short sales. So I went to the seminar and I watched him do his thing. And his program was like $5.99. And I didn't buy it because at the time I didn't have the money to buy it really. But I also had a better solution because my experience in real estate up until that point was selling from the stage. It was going to big real estate shows and selling condo conversions all over the country. That was my experience. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. And I sent this guy an email and I said, Hey man, I really believe that you know everything there's to know about short sales, but you don't know a damn thing about seminar selling, which is what you just failed at doing here. So come to Vegas. We'll spend half the day with you teaching me everything that you need, you know about short sales. And then I'll spend half the day teaching you everything I know about seminar sales. And that's what we did. And that's how I learned how to do short sales. But I knew to get into that from watching those trends. And then once I had that knowledge, once I went and sit, you know, I, I seeked out that knowledge, I had that solution for that marketplace. So it wasn't just me one day deciding that this is what I needed to do. I watched the marketplace. I saw that pivot. And then I went and gained the knowledge that I needed by any means necessary to get it done. So you can't tell me, well, I don't have the fun nine nine. Think about this too. In 2006, 2007, what was like nothing? What didn't really exist? YouTube. 
YouTube. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. See, you have your source of information was going to stuff like the smoky ass plaza ballroom and watching seminars and paying for pro programs and other stuff. You can literally get any kind of information you want mm -hmm. off of YouTube. Now, why do I think short sales are not going to be a huge thing into this into this market now, even with the recession? Because there's too much equity. Too much equity. Yeah, inventory issues. Everybody has equity. Everybody has money. Right. Talking also about getting educated there. Now is a great time to look for mentors, man. It's a good time to look for people to teach you what you need to know and what you don't know. Great time. And, and how do you approach and find a mentor? Like, like, what do you do? How do you get there? A lot of people don't know how to do that. Well, I know. I just don't want to say it. Right? No, say it. No, no, no. You don't. That's Colt's gig. To, you're not <laughs> sexy enough to listen. You don't think with this red blazer, he's not sleeping with somebody for information. <laughs> yeah, come on, he's, I know. Yeah, I'll do, do it whatever twice it takes. And all of a sudden, bam. Whatever it takes. That's no, the no. worst thing you ever done for a freaking cell. <laughs> no, but again, again, when it gets time, man, to go get or approach a mentor, give some just like that guy. I had something of value I could give him. Right. Right. I had something of value that can make his life a little better. And there you go. You better figure out what you bring to the table. Now, sometimes the, go, the cool thing about real estate is, and what we do is, sometimes you can get around better people just by changing your scenery. Yeah. And or, th that's the only commitment you got to make to that. Yeah. It's interesting. I I have to think about that because it's a really good question about how to get a mentor, like for, for what I do. Mm -hmm. I just, you kind of know people in the business say, have you, you had this situation? Cause we're all kind of licensed the same, right? But there's people that know yeah. way more than I do in right. all these different things. So when something comes up, I reach out. Well, let I'm me ask you a question. There's obviously somebody been in the business for a while. That's probably taken a shine to you. I'll, oh, I'll yeah. say. Yeah. Why did they take a shine to you? Why did they want to work with me or like, why did they take a shine and, and, and wh why do they take a call? Why do they give you information? Why? Um, because I think I'm, I'm pretty earnest. I think I'm pretty authentic. I think because. I tend to give things to people too when it goes around, comes around. Mm -hmm. Small community. I haven't burned any bridges that I'm aware of. You know, mm -hmm. I think my reputation precedes me. Mm -hmm. I like to keep it that way. You know, and so um, one one person, I just won't say names, um, said, hey, this guy is really smart when it comes to X. Mm -hmm. So I knew some people that knew them, so I went golfing with them. And then have you know case together so. so now you have case together but so that brings up an interesting point because one of the things that i've always used with great leverage is <clears throat> let's say well, okay let's back up again we'll go back to the last crash real quick yep. which is so we were doing short sales and then the short sales became well every time you do a short sale somebody does something called a bpo broker price opinion what's that well they pay an agent to go out and then basically do an appraisal on this house. So we're driving so, by your house 50, yeah, miles, 50 an miles an hour. Which like right? a, <laughs> no, no, no. So at one point I asked Google one of these agents, I asked one of these agents, what's in it for you? Why do you do this? Like when they call me to do a BP on a short sale, why, why do you do this? Guys like, well, you know that, I mean, they pay us like 35 bucks a rattle, but if they foreclose on the property, then I get the listing. And I said, Oh, and I said, well, what's, how's the math on that work? And he goes, well, like, I don't know, probably for every 20, 25 of these I do, I'll, I'll wind up with the listing. Nice. Okay, so I immediately reverse engineered and became the BPO whore. And we just went to every BPO company we could. And all of those companies started that road of how I got in with asset managers. And when I would go to these companies, you know, this is what I would do. I would, you don't, you don't just send a blind email to people as you're trying to pave a road. You don't just do that. You don't just try to apply here or there. You got to find an in. Like I'll never, my biggest champion that this one thing made me so much money in the last downturn. It was crazy, which was, I was trying to find asset managers at different companies and I was doing all this research. I was looking at their MySpace. I was looking at all their, you know, their likes, all this <laughs> just shit. Kept just, coming up Tom. Yeah. Whatever it was, kept coming up Tom. We, hey, you know Tom too? I know Tom. We have, no, we have one we mutual have, friend. We know Tom. No, but I kept <laughs> looking for, I kept looking for ways in and I finally found Susan Spears that worked at Lender Processing Services, which was the biggest REO house in the country as an asset manager. And in her MySpace, favorite shows, The Apprentice. <laughs> so I was like, yes, I got you. Now, that could have been anything. It could have been, I love the Cubbies. It could have been anything. But when I sent that email, when I sent that intro, that, that intro to her, it was, hey, you know, I was honest, looking at, you know, we've already have tons of BPO experience for these companies, blah, 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 looking to break it with you guys. And oh, yeah, by the way, in case it carries any weight, I was on the third season of The Apprentice. Like two seconds, got an email back. Sure. So I found that little button. 
Were you that mother? <laughs> no, but I, no, no. I found that little button I could push, and, yeah. and and luckily something goes off. Luckily, that little button opened the door. We became great friends, and she helped me tremendously over the course of my career. And and I sold hundreds and hundreds of homes for them. But again, that wasn't just trying to bulldoze my way into where I thought the market was going. That was very strategic planning on getting to where I wanted to do. Yeah. And I never could have gotten those doors open had I not educated myself on those processes. You know what? We never. I'm not saying we call a spade a spade. We oftentimes live in the ether, though, on the show, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about high-level concepts, mm -hmm. right? Things that you should broadly do. Mm -hmm. Colt's been talking to me about getting back into golf. And I sit there and think back on it. Unfortunately, if you suck at golf and you don't play golf, you are missing out on an opportunity to make connections with people, right. especially if you want. Because people that are professionals and they go to their office, I'm like the exceptionist rule. I don't mm -hmm. love to golf that much. I, I belong to a country club. I play once in a while. Right. It's fun when it's fun. But... A lot of guys in our profession or industry and women too, mm -hmm. right? They really enjoy going out for a round of golf. Now I don't does it cost you a couple hundred bucks? Right. Well, for uh, for me it's more than a couple hundred bucks. It's five hours that I don't have. But that's fine. But you're talking about people that want to break into something, right? That's not mm -hmm. just a five hours I don't have. That's an investment of time into somebody that if True. you want to be near them. Say, say, hey, uh, my buddy uh, Chris and I, we're gonna go golfing. Um, somebody mentioned that you like the golfer. However, you know that they're a golfer because people talk. Yeah, you know, you you know, I know who is and who isn't. Hey, are, are you a golfer? Would you mind going to play around? Right. Like, oh, sure, I'll come play. But we'll. yeah, they, like, they, they will always say yes to that. If that's a golf. huge in. I'm, I'm sorry to say it. Yeah, uh, whatever it is, this so, is literally there, there's small stuff that you could, and it doesn't need to be a thousand dollar membership. Claim. It they doesn't. You ha can just have, go play around. Go sit there and play with somebody, or you know, sit there and cigars find out what they like uh, you know but i get that intro all the time and it's the best thing want to go have a cigar one day we're here you know and i've met some cool people through just cigars sure you meet mm -hmm. yeah you meet those cool people but i i just was kind of looking back and thinking back on some of these things yeah. but how do you know people yeah right if you want to get to know somebody better and they play golf just go ask them to golf yeah. you you know, I, I don't know if that means maybe go get a little better at golf, John. As a, oh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of the 10,000 foot no, view. I used no, to be I'm really good at playing golf. No, I suck. But the no, 10,000 foot view is do all these things. The the, the two foot view is, hey, go take some golf lessons. Because yeah. like yeah. I, I used to I used to make some good money in Palm Springs mm -hmm. and first coming out here because of golf. That's how we ended up, not we, me and you, but me on the REO stuff. We played golf with a, a, an exec for a huge bank yeah. that's no longer there. I, and it Look back there, at all right? your connections. I always kind of yeah. poo-poo golf a bit. Like, oh, come on, there's you know, whatever. Exactly. But that's a really good way to kind of be around yeah. people and see if they're cool. Because I play golf with people that are duds, and I never wanted to be around them. I don't want to work right. with them because I don't want to be around them. Mm -hmm. Then you meet people where you have a lot in common. They're a lot of fun to play with. They have yeah. high ethics on the golf course, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Which that transfers, right? It does. People are like, yeah, ah, yeah, no. They're yeah, person yeah, throwing true. their... You start watching they're using the hand there. wedge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hand you start wedge. people that, oh, uh, what'd you get there? I got a four. It's like, and then how many on the green? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and anyway, I just think there's something to be said about that from yeah. a really practical sense. That's true. I, I'll give you that. That's true. But again, with real estate being educated, you know, right now I talked about it earlier. People that can serve up solutions are going to win. You know, somebody's to ask me, like, why won't we have REOs again? Why is that not going to happen again? Why are we not going to have this glut wave of foreclosures that people want? I'm going to tell you the two reasons why. Number one is because 16 years ago when this happened for the first time, we did not have institutional investors that were commoditizing single-family homes as, 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 as a matter of business. I said we did not. We did not did have not. that. There was no you've got, very, you've Sorry, got yeah. very large hedge funds now that – that is their goal, to buy single family homes and turn America into renters. That yes. is their goal. So if you don't think these large hedge funds already have backdoor deals or backdoor arrangements with the large banks for properties that go into default to just take them off their sheets, you're nuts. Because those banks do not want to fire back up those loss mitigation departments. They do not want to deal with those utilities. They do not want to deal with the field management. They don't want to deal with any of it. Program. Yeah. They, they just want to clear them off their books at, a, at market price right over these hedge funds that will buy them and turn them into per permit rentals. And then those properties, when that happens, you have to remember, the average homeowner sells their house every seven years. When those properties go into those Wall Street funds, it's like the place burned down. It's never going to be on the market again. It's gone. They're not going to wake up and be like, you know what? Today's probably a good time to sell. Yeah, 9132 nope. Oak Knoll Street. Yeah. You know, eh, it is always it is going. always going to be off the board, yeah. which is going to continue to stress 
are inventory issues. Now, here's the other side of the equation, which is this. I don't think a lot of properties even make it to those steps because right now, there's also something we didn't necessarily have back in 2006, which is you have an army of internet educated real estate investors that understand creative finance. And homeowners with equity with 3.25% mortgages that are in default, that is blood in the water yeah. to an army, an army oh, yeah. of investors that are going to be all in those houses, set, make buying those mortgages sub two and sure. getting it. So if you are a realtor and you do not have those solutions and you do not understand creative finance, you're going to have a problem because all of those deals are going to come off the board. Shout out to Jamil Demidji. Yeah, J J <laughs> Jamil, there you go. Jamil you and think, Pace. You think that stuff's going to not be just going to No, dude, by, dude, you know, two, two, two dear friends of mine, Pace and Jamil. Um, but yeah, that that's the point. So you have all these other influences, which is why I'm not, you know, tomorrow night, I'm not going to get up there and talk about selling REOs because I don't think it's going to happen again. I Nobody in the world, look, I hate that the public would be harmed by it. But from a purely business standpoint, business was a booming when that happened for me. Don't you think, though, that, <clears throat> you know, with the ebbs and flows, people get hurt. Don't you think people are going to be more hurt by not being able to buy homes? What do you mean? Having a country full of renters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's dreadful. It, it, it's, a, it's a terrible. Because that's equation. how the middle class, right? It's decimate. Well, that's how they build it's wealth. It's the wealth. only way. And that's why, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but that's why certain people that historically, if you've ever been prevented from being able to buy real estate or participate in real estate, it followed historical poverty. Yeah. Right. So participation in the real estate market yeah. is paramount. If you want to have a burgeon, like a growing middle you know, class, healthy middle class, the American dream for a reason. It is America. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. Sorry. I mean, just had to anyway, get that in. Sorry. I just every time <laughs> Love I do leave that, it, Connell. Love her or leave it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm such a patriot that I'm so proud. Not only do I scream nights louder than anyone else, I also <laughs> feel a certain amount of guilt for interrupting that beautiful song. I was song just going to say with the night chant, but I do that's both. Still disrespectful. So listen, but whatever. Listen <laughs> again. Everybody else out there might be preaching doom and gloom. I'm saying with some education in your field, you can be the light in the harbor at which they sail through the choppy seas. That's what I'm saying. Education. You know, yeah. Huge. To your point. John, when you talk about people farm and area and neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? Because they become an expert in the neighborhood. You talk about Eric, you talk about mm -hmm. all these people that go, no, 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 no. It's like, don't mess with the West side. That's Connie's, <laughs> you know, whatever. Stay at the West side. Stay at the West side. But if you get, if you become, right, an REO expert, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, I, I know you're saying the inventory won't be there, but there'll be some things that just fall through the cracks. Maybe, be some, maybe, maybe there'll bankruptcy. Be some. Maybe, there'll, be, there'll be some. Maybe um, stocking horse bidding and bankruptcies or chapter sevens or mm. 13s or like whatever, right. something, right? Become proficient at a thing and just, you know, make a name for yourself. I think if, I think if, you, can offer, if you can offer creative finance solutions yep. for sellers that gets them their number, I think you're going to do very well in this upcoming downturn with real estate. I think that's... I've got one deal right now. Creative BK. financing. I'm probably going to look at buying one myself, creative financing. Yep. Like, it's you can make money at any point of yeah. history downturns. I love it. Well, let's talk about the second thing, which is this: if you if you want to plan uh, to, for the recession, you got to get organized. You got to one hundred percent go and organize top to bad, top to bottom. And the reason being is this: I must say this phrase five times a week, which is the answer is in the math. That's what I always say. I look at everything when we're trying to make a decision. I'm always like, ah, it's in the math. And I, when you walk in my office, nine times out of ten, I got like eight spreadsheets up with all this data on it that I'm compiling into this stuff. Was oh, that to what you out. call those? John? That's what, yeah, it's spreadsheets. What, I call it. It's good looking yeah. spreadsheets. <laughs> Delete the browser history is all I ask when I die. I'm just kidding. No, but when I'm looking at all those spreadsheets, trying to find because the answer is always in the math. Because if you don't have the data. If, you, if you're not tracking everything you do, if you're one of those people that's just been flying by the seat of your pants, you're going to start making decisions on an emotional basis. You're going to start making an emotional decision. Absolutely. Um, and you can't do that. You've got to be, you got to make decisions based in the data strictly. And that's how it is. So here's some concrete things that I'm going to, you know, my advice for things you can do to get yourself organized. Number one, you, like I just said, you got to start tracking everything. Everything you do. Um, if you're in business, I mean, you wouldn't open up a, a shoe store and never take inventory. Right. You would never look, you would never not understand your labor cost. You would never understand your cost of goods. You would never do that. And most people, especially in, in, in service slash sales businesses like this, like insurance, like these other businesses, they don't track anything. 
they just the leads come in, they make calls, they close deals, they do this. And, leads and, come and, in, leads go out. You can't. Explain and that's that. it. And they just don't. They don't track anything. So you know, if you if you are someone that is paying for leads, you should understand how much of your business comes from that lead source. Conversion rate. Yeah. If you are someone that just gets on the phone for six hours a day or goes and sits open house, does that, you need to understand how much that time is worth. What, what actually comes out of that? What is that time worth? You need to start tracking all of these things because the biggest mistake that people make into a downturn with their business is they continue to do things like they've always done it. Well, it's just how we've always done it. So, and all of a sudden when it stops, stops working, they're screwed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, I, I told you about that guy who, I have 20 years experience in this business. Yeah. And the <sighs> VP at a company goes, that guy's got one year of experience 20 times. He's got <laughs> nothing thing. to add to this conversation. Right. He doesn't have all this experience, right? Yeah. But well, that's just the way we've done it for 20 years. Yeah. Well, that means you've missed out on things like the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. The like interwebs the that are internet, now here. You know, there's yeah. ways to communicate, you know, without smoke signals. So, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think you got to stay with the times. Things change, material changes, price changes. Mm -hmm. That's what like, my roofing company, we're, I'm like, what's uh, plywood right now? How much is that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you need to make sure yep. you're on top of materials, smallest things. Like, yep. I know what my labor percentage is. I know mm -hmm. what my material percentage is. I know what my insurance is. I, I can show you a graph right there that I'll have it down to a T of what my, you know, costs are and mm -hmm. stuff. And sometimes that changes. If you're still well, selling changes. plywood at $30 you know, whatever, when it went up in to your 90, bid, in your right? bid, yeah. 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 But to your point, Cole, like you have to also understand who you're working with in the businesses you're running, yeah. you know, in, in the MBA program, when you're studying it, you operate like every company is Apple or target or whatever has middle management, whatever. So there's people that are, are doing these things, trying to introduce Slack channels to like a roofing yeah. company. And you got these guys that are like, I don't, doesn't have. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, or truck drivers. Hey, well, look, you know, the, let's get a Slack channel going to talk about this or that, the other, right? Like if you're not a high level professional business, yeah. right. Or, or yeah. whatever, you have to know that there's certain things that are going to help, like throw the guys who are, who are uh, out there, you know, swinging hammers or whatever, throw them a pizza party once in a while. Right. They're not going to get excited by a trip to the opera or whatever, you know, yeah. like it's just, you have to know who's know within the organization. Cause oh, I, agree. I do that too. There's, I was working with these companies that were trying to always add this technology into stuff and it just, it, it didn't work. It was pointless. People. Yeah. yeah. It's the hardest to intent with new tech in any business yeah. adoption, adoption rate is terrible. I, I, I had to drop some stuff yesterday, which is going to bring us to our next thing, which is audit your expenses, man. See, you have I a business, that. you got to audit that. your expenses. I knew it was coming. No, well actually it was last, but it was a good segue. Yeah. So I just jumped on the list, but now <laughs> audit your expenses. You, you, you have to do this and not just, you know, your expenses, your per personal expenses. I mean, you go through audit where your business is spending money and ask yourself, do I really need this? Is this something I really need or can I renegotiate it down? Yep. Can I get a better deal? Um, is there another product that's similar, that's cheaper, that does the same thing? You know, during boom times, we're also used to just kind of, Hey man, top line sales yeah, covers sure, a lot yeah. of problems on a PL. Life is good. We're just sailing along. But the reality of it is, is if you if you blink, the bad times come and all of a sudden those those costs will eat you alive. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely Colt, eat you alive. Colt went out, got a new iPhone. Now he's yeah. missing that Samsung. Missing you know, that. it's like sometimes God, you just gotta mad. downgrade. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you gotta downgrade back <laughs> to the old trash that you were Dude, used I'm to. Dude, I'm telling you, this is the worst fucking. Oh, don't phone get him ever, started. Man. I <laughs> don't just, get him started. I, that was, look back at my tweet this weekend. If but, they would give Two Android users, an oh, iPhone God. for a f fucking week, it'd be a good phone. The, the best, the best part about about auditing Horrible. your expenses is, is that's why I, I it's like I was telling somebody the other day. I love adversity because through adversity is when I get creative. It's when I get better. As I get get awesome. Mm -hmm. Nothing sucks worse than leaving your credit card somewhere and having to cancel it. Right? Uh, we've talked sucks. about it. I believe my yeah. phrase was, "I'd rather be kicked in the nuts by Kamaru Usman yes, for exactly, six minutes." Yes, exactly for six minutes. But when that happens, <laughs> it gives you the opportunity to go through all of your charges. Yeah. And audit what you use, what you don't use, and cancel stuff. And again, you know, my coaching group, one of my favorites was, you know, one of my coaching students canceled four hundred and ninety-seven dollars of stuff a month. That's big. That's a lot because it was real estate stuff they weren't using. So five hundred dollars a month that they can now reallocate that money somewhere else. Of course, my favorite will always be Mikey Gorton and his twenty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents a month for American Airlines Unlimited. Uh, Wi-Fi wi that he bought on the flight that he took two years ago and hasn't been on American Airlines since. <laughs> Every how does it, single I'm sorry, six hundred dollars later, in a seven Every month. Could you get? Would you not find that out? I you think too, I, like, I feel like times I is good. Would, no, I watch my stuff. When times is good, time. man, you don't pay attention. Stuff like that will sneak up on you. I missed. Crazy. Uh, yeah, I had I, I had to sue a doctor in town. 
because he charged my personal credit card. My wife called in to pay for medical records for one of our clients. Mm -hmm. And this guy ended up putting my client's entire bill Ooh. on my personal credit card. Because we're only allowed to pay costs up front. We can't pay for the services of yeah. the clients as attorneys. And so the problem was I didn't notice it for two months because honestly it wasn't, you know, yeah, it was, it was just a couple not, grand. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, you know, when you run, you know, yeah, payroll, yeah, yeah. you get these things, comes out operating, whatever. Didn't notice it. And then I look back, where's $2,000? What the hell is this for? But you did notice it, right? I did right. notice Most people. Called him back and said, you, you did this. And he goes, yeah, well. When so it, I sued him and won. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when you have no legal I fees. I know when you have no <laughs> legal fees. To yeah, do it. No, I, I would sue somebody at least once a back. week. And there then he all. tried to file, file a bar complaint against me, and then the bar called me up, and I said, that guy's not a client. That's a doctor that stole money from me that I sued and won. And they're like, okay, case closed. <laughs> Moving on. Many people he, would Dr. Since retired, by the way. I would sue one person a week. <laughs> Dr. Since yeah. retired, by the way. So. Oh, God. You, you know what? You know what cracks me up with realtors? And this is something I've always said, and one of the lessons that I always teach, which is, especially now, they just spend money on everything when it comes to marketing, and they have no idea what's generating their actual money. They have no, they have no clue. That's why I don't buy billboards. Yeah, well, but here's the thing. It's fine to buy billboards. If how, What's the one thing you got to have, though, if you buy a billboard? What are you going to have? Uh, like a tracking thing? You have to have that. a singular number for that billboard but that that's rings to a singular thing. It's it's impossible because that number is not why people call. That's all a part of this grandiose thing about brand recognition so that when something does happen, they have back in their psyche, oh, I saw a billboard. Yeah, phone number. Guy. No, not even the phone Google number. It. They'll Google it. It'll come up. It, it's a part of uh, ad impressions. So if they see on the first, first five, but I, so see, if you're on the first but, page, but, 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 but here's the, but here's the like, point. Oh. You're talking, you're talking about, you're talking about attorneys with 50 million billboards and, and right. like craziness. Most real estate people will farm an area. Right. They'll farm, they'll have a website and you know, maybe, maybe a TV commercial, maybe, or radio commercial, whatever. Grocery store. Done very well, grocery store, right. right. But all of those things have the same phone number on them. Mm -hmm. They all have the same website. They all have the same landing address. 100%. Like there's no reason for your marketing to not all have the, the biggest winner. Again, we talked about this is the biggest winner from COVID was the QR code. I mean, oh, came yeah, out screaming, come back for the yeah. QR code. It was dead technology. Nobody I'm, I'm it. here for it. Yeah. And now everybody from restaurants, you're so used to using it. Fine. Use QR codes on your marketing to dis to, to, so you can figure out what's actually driving business to you. Because yep. if you if you just throw send it all it in one pot, I promise yeah. you, most of that pot is wasted money. You can send it a different landing page or whatever. I I could tell you, I've got three different landing pages for very similar marketing, but yeah. just so I know exactly where it came from. Yeah, I like that. It's good. Yep. Tracking your time is almost more important than tracking your money. Now, again, I say this because time is a resource you can't get back. You can always get more money. However. When there is a sense of urgency, when the markets have changed, your business is in trouble, the amount of effort that you place into whatever strategy you're using to generate revenue has got, you've got to make sure you're getting your maximum return on your time. There are people that will spend, you know, for example, with, with real estate agents, it's the great, should I go door knock? Okay, fine. How long is that going to take? Is there a more efficient way to touch more people? What are the results? What comes back? And again, this is where you this is where you have to track everything. You know, with my students, we do a we do a one page business plan where it has three different strategies they go from, and in that they have to track all the strategies. And like for example, yesterday we said Judgment Day, which was one month into the quarter, mm -hmm. where we said okay, we're, we're we're over a month into the quarter here. You need to understand, or their three month quarter, whatever it was, you need to understand which one of those strategies is working, and what's not working. So I need you to run the math on it and see what's generating activity, what's generating business, and how many of you guys are gonna stay the course with your plan, and how many of you guys are gonna pivot from something you're doing. But you're gonna decide now. If it's not working for you, you're gonna let it go and invest your time and money somewhere else. This is an interesting point. You started off with 100 people. Uh huh? How many are you down to? Honestly. <sighs> that are doing- 40, that, 42? That are- 42. How many people don't wanna put in the work? Well, yeah. And when you hold them accountable and when you say, I want you to do this, you go, I don't want to do that. Well, it's funny through this process, because this first one, obviously I just did it for agents that work here. And I will say one of the biggest things about coaching is when, when you're doing it like I am for just to help our people, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's a switch that goes off in your head when something's free. 
And let this be a good lesson to you if you don't value your services or value your time. There's a switch that goes off where they don't value it as much. So next time I do this, when I fire this back up next quarter, we do our next round of it. The first thing I'm going to do. Charge a fee. I'm going to charge 100 bucks, and I'm just $100. And I'm going to hold it. And if you fail out or you, or you stop doing what you're supposed to be doing, I'm going to donate your money to hop on a cure. And if you do do everything you're supposed to do, I'll give it back to you at the end. And that'll be the deal. But I, I, I got to feel like there's got to be some, some buy-in from that money. There's got to be some sort of emotional buy-in. How did I know that it was going to have that much drop-off? Well, I think, it's every, I think that's anywhere. So when you whittle it down to the inevitable 10 people, that are gonna ride it out, right? No, I, I think the, I think the ones I got now are in it, and they're they're okay. in it to win. It. I'm just they're, you know, sometimes you whittle losing. down over yeah. Christmas, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. You know, people start dropping off or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like jujitsu. That's why there's very few black belts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. But the ones that stick around are the ones that get black belts. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. Well, the one you know, it, it, the, the growth that I've seen out of the people that have stuck it out that's I mean, what I'm saying. It has been really phenomenal, and watching them do things that they never were comfortable doing before has been really, really, really. I'm glad. Great. That's, I'm glad to hear that because. Yeah. Glad to hear that that many because a lot of times people just drop off because quitting is so fucking easy. It's so easy to do. It's well, so it's good. You don't want so good. Yeah, it's you easy. don't want something bad enough, right? I didn't want to go to jujitsu. You could morning. be a. It's not hard. I, I was thinking about. Do. I was trying to find any way I could get out of it. I, I was like, I got this fishing trip coming up. I'm going to a wedding this weekend. I, I can't hurt my arm. Well, if I hurt my arm, it's gonna be right, right. well. I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell you. So my workout deal that I'm doing, right? I've been telling myself, I'm going to do the four months. I'm going to do the first four months of this. And I even told you, I'm like, I got it now. I totally got it. Like, I, I know what I'm, I know the macros and I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing everything every day. You know, really, I just talked to my trainer guy once a week for five minutes. Until you're not. Until five minutes? No. It, it ended on Monday. Oh. Right? It ended Monday, I guess. I didn't even realize that it, that it ended because I, you know, go be bopping in. There's nothing on my calendar. Hey, Ryan, my trainer. Hey, man, there's no. There's nothing in my in my calendar day. He's like, I yeah, but, you know, the, I, he goes, I have it in my deal that you're you're up today. You, you need to renew or do whatever you're gonna do. I'll load something for you right now. And he loaded a workout for me, and I was like, oh shit. So I sat down with Gidge because I was like, I'm not gonna re up this. I'm not gonna because it was expensive. And I told get sat with Gidge last night, and I'm like, I'm terrified if I don't part with this money. Mm-hmm. If I don't have somebody watching what I'm doing, I'm going to quit. I have a personal trainer. For that that's why I told only him. that reason not that I don't know how to lift a weight yeah he helps out stacking stuff it's somebody I sponsor I like mm-hmm. him being there he's, he's a good guy to you know he doesn't have a, a big ego so mm-hmm. he's not there he's just only helpful mm-hmm. but 95 percent of the reason why he's there so that I go yeah but, I mean it's so I, I happily paid the money and re-upped I happily did it because I just the results are more important to me oh, yeah, than yeah, the yeah, money yeah, yeah. but if I didn't part with the money like if that I said we'll just load it for free if, if, here's the thing. If he would have said, like, you got to ask yourself. If he would have said, we'll just load the workouts in every day, don't worry about it, but Ryan's not going to talk to you once a week. He's not going to watch it anymore. I don't think I, I don't, I mean, I, I, like, to, I like to believe that I'd have the in, internal fortitude to get yeah. it, but I also, I, there's a reason this is the first thing that in my entire 50 years of existence has worked. I like to operate under black and white. Yeah. I, and, I don't like, I don't. I know myself enough that I don't give myself room to negotiate my way out of things. Yeah. But if you sat there and actually screenshot a picture that you absolutely hated and looked at that daily, I think that would motivate you enough. Yeah. No, I, I tried. Dude, I'm telling you, this is working. But anyway, long story short. Long story short, know, people quit. People that stick around and do the hard work, the ones that yeah. win over time. So if you're wondering what to do in this recession, just like don't quit. If, if you really want to do this, and if well, you don't, then quit now and quit fast and go do something else. But sometimes you do need to quit some things. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Like, if you have this marketing that's been working, the marketing that worked seven, eight months ago is will continue to work through, but you bought, you better be a lot more focused on what's working, so you better quit some shit. Well, you, you right? Gotta, like, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying quit, yeah, get the, but, but again, no, I don't, but I'm just, yeah. yeah, yeah here's, 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 a case, here's a case. Yeah. Well, one, one of my students, and I haven't had a chance to talk to her about this, so if she hears this before I talk to you, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm not just, I'm not going to say your name. But I got, a t- I got a message today from one of my students in, in the deal, and she was like, hey, my dog is a big part of my brand, I want it, you know, it's a very marketable brand. It's very popular in America. A lot of people have this stock. And it, like, it was really about my unique selling feature as an agent was this dog. And I read that and I'm thinking to myself, if I'm sitting in my house right now and I just know I'm getting laid off 
in two weeks. And I know I'm not going to be able to make the mortgage payment in three in 90 days. I need to get out of this house. I know the market's falling. Do I give a shit what kind of dog you have? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the but it's also and the answer is no. I want the well, most no, professional. No, but, but the, the point, the yeah. point is the only thing you should be marketing right now is solutions to people's problems. That's it. Everything else is noise. Everything else. But you don't think having, and this is, I, I totally 100% agree with that, but making yourself unique, right? DJ Khaled's big because he had good stuff, but he had singing, saying, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we oh. the best, whatever. Like, if you can make I'm yourself sorry, a little it, brand. What was saying? Can you, uh, I, we I, the best yes. music. <laughs> but okay. if you could make. DJ <laughs> Khaled. But I, most, why do they, why does the FBI give a. Um, Maybach music. Hey, Maybach. <laughs> but seriously, look at all that, right? Mm -hmm. Jason Derulo. Like yeah. you could no. go on and on. But why does FBI give uh, the the people that rob banks a nickname? So that they remembered. Yeah, because if you didn't, like, so maybe sometimes having a what, little catch, but don't make that. What would your, your nickname, brand if you robbed banks? Called what would right. your nickname be? What, what would your nickname be? Man, I don't know. Polo assassin. Polo assassin. I'd be in a pa polo, <laughs> killing it. Uh, no, but I, I get where she's going again downtown, that. the ascot burglar. <laughs> <laughs> in the tracksuit. I am wearing that to a Christmas party. I don't give a shit what you say. I'm showing up in a tracksuit to a Christmas party. Tracksuit shady. <laughs> but don't you uh, think like... Again. The gentleman. But also you don't want to be too showy in times like that, right? Like I remember having a nicer car when the market crashed yeah. and that was not a good thing going to kick people out of their houses. They're crying. You're getting yeah. a nice car. Yeah, there, there are cars I would not be driving to the listing appointments right now. Yeah. So I, I yeah. just would not be, which is fine. Yeah. But the last part about this obviously is being intentional with everything that you do, because right now you have got, you can no longer drift, man. You cannot just drift your way through this and, and, and see what happens. You've got to wake up with a plan. You got to know where you're going. You got to do that. And like our good friend Seneca once said, no wind blows in favor of a ship without direction. That's the exact quote. Actually, got it. I looked at it. it. I looked it up. And it. I highlighted it. I looked it up and I highlighted there you go. it. I like that. No, but which means like, if you don't know where you're trying to get to and you don't have a plan to get there, you're not going to get anywhere. So you know what I'm just trying to do? My main thing right now. What's up? Is trying to get verified on Twitter. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Have you noticed how everything's <laughs> risk? Have you noticed? I think I got eight dollars in my yeah, pocket. Like, <laughs> Make that happen. I still have we talked about the nope. Eli. Oh, that's why I wanted to bring it up before oh this. My God, before is that not the talk about being yeah, intentional, John. This all comes down to you, you know what? Um, everybody, people want to shit on Elon now because he's obviously like a a, a a pogo bozo, the clown that just should be punched because he just doesn't know how to get out of his own way. And maybe it, maybe I'm being insensitive. Maybe there's some level of being on the spectrum where he doesn't understand how to read the room mm -hmm. because he's been so successful with PayPal or whatever. And maybe he was just the face of it and there were brilliant you know people behind it or whatever. But SpaceX was ambitious and it's done some really amazing things. And Tesla was very ambitious and it's re revolutionized the way our our country's logistics and operations go um the hyperloop i had the fortunate you know i got to take the hyperloop the other day what a what an interesting oh, experience yeah. yeah what an interesting experience but me. but then you got twitter <laughs> when you want to know about not overextending yourself for knowing what shots you should take and which should work elon musk with a rocket company makes perfect sense electric cars perfect sense because they don't talk back These, this is where it's in the math Social networks, social media, things like that. They talk back. Oh, they talk back very loudly. <laughs> they talk back and they get very fired loudly. via tweet. <laughs> Did you see the I, like? As it, your attorney, oh, I advise you don't yeah. fire people, people via, via tweet, tweet. E even if you have a right to it. It's really bad optics. Oh boy! How great was it that company losing billions of dollars in one day? The uh, FTX imploding. No, um, oh, him too. Ellie, well, the, the uh, yeah, uh, the, the pharmaceutical company. Yeah, uh, um, uh, for diabetes, no. Leela insulin. Ellie. It, it, the insulin. You didn't see that? Leela, uh, Leela somebody. Ellie. Leela Ellie. Leela Ellie bought mm. or created a Twitter account. Paid the nine bucks to have it verified. verified and they said we're giving away insulin, giving for, insulin for, free for free. Just tank their actual stock. And people sat there and then they, they had to come back. These. They've done it for a bunch of these things. And they had to come back and say, <laughs> "No, we're not. That was not us tweeting that." They lost billions in one oh day. Oh my god! Because. Yeah, because he didn't think it out because humans aren't robots. Like you can't, we're not plug and play things. You can't just be like X amount of people do this. Oh my like, God. You have to have certain amount of sense about you to be in this. Well, in this I always realm. said that's, I mean, just like the 15,000, oh. you know, 
people getting murdered or whatever. That was because somebody with a blue check mark freaking started tweeting that. That's <sighs> not, you know, in Iran. Yeah, but again, humans don't know how to fact check. Humans don't know how to do one no. of these things. So just to John and your point about, you know, knowing your angles, knowing your shots. Oh, God. Don't, don't, don't be the, Listen. don't be somebody with, um, uh, no direction. He uh, bought that with no uh, direction. Chris, the champ, um, Connell, your <laughs> lo local realtor and baseball dad, whatever. Maybe that's not the image I want to have if I'm pitching to banks. No. Right. Well, we, 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 we all miss <laughs> vacation. <laughs> I had a, I had a pretty hefty, I had a pretty hefty miss the other day. If you guys like to hear about that real quick. Well, I would love to hear about the hefty miss. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I, I'm going to tell you that. Well, no, I'm going to tell you this. Well, and what's funny is this ends with some schadenfreude from me personally, which is what I always do. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do. So I had a pretty good gaff, um, gaff a pretty good gaff for the gaff ord, I gaff guess, a couple board. weeks ago. So I went to my good friend Steve Sims' book launch, right? And I love Steve, and one of the biggest charities that he promotes is something called uh, Prison Without Borders, where it's like an entrepreneurial uh, deal where they go to prison and they, they it's kind of like they do Shark Tank for prisoners that are about to get out and help them re rehabilitate themselves through the process of coaching entrepreneurship. And Steve's been doing this for years. You know, you go on your prison with me and we go judge and we do all, we help them out. And anyway, the reason that's important is because his assistant was walking around with a camera. That's what I'm fast forwarding through right now, filming at the book, at the book launch. And when they got to me, I said something very nice and heartfelt about Steve. And then she said, no, no, no. Steve said you were funny. Say something funny. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that they're going to, I said something I thought, didn't think it through that I didn't think was funny. Or I thought was funny at the time without thinking it through thinking there's no way they're going to put it in this video. They'll never use it. Here it comes. Millions of people. 50 seconds. Stupid. Hang on a minute. Let me play it. I'll play. <laughs> this is so bad. Hang on a second. Here it comes. Ready? Here it comes. This was a book launch. I'm actually Steve's parole officer. I was going to arrest him, but then I started reading the book and it changed my whole life. Now I no longer want to be a parole officer. I want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so, I mean, that's I mean, cute. I mean, yeah, but I made a joke about being a parole officer at, yeah, and it was people. Yeah, no, that's not it a was, gap. I, 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 on, I, thought, I thought it was a pretty decent faux pas. But when I do something no, stupid, which happens a lot. I'm which, not letting you get away with that gap. That was yeah. totally fine. But I'll tell you what. I, I'm gonna, but I'm going to give you that. Okay, if that's, that's, if that, fine. If that's the sickness. Totally on the table. If that's the sickness, to me, I thought it was it was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was tone deaf to me anyway. But if you when you do something stupid, right, and you screw up an interaction with another human, I'm gonna give, I'll give you the tonic to, to cleanse your soul. All you have to do, the and all, the all you have to do Quinine. is Google Burt Kreishner oh. interviews Adam Sandler. <laughs> oh, oh, it was it was during one. it was during the. I literally the, just it, saw Burt Kreischer drink out of a Nazi. Hang on, no, no, no. It was during it was during COVID when they were trying to raise money for comedians, whatever. And Adam Sandler agreed to be interviewed on this Zoom call, Whitney Cummings, and Burt Kreishner just could not have said just because he was such a big fan. He just got overwhelmed with himself and just regurgitated nonsense out of his mouth. Like I think Adam Sandler in a 10 minute interview said three things. He just kept talking oh, about, wow. Oh my God, we're a great story. This one time, blah, 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 blah. It's it's like, Christ, Christ Christ anyway. Right. But then he's like, he's like, I can't wait to see your new movie, uh, precious gems or hidden gems or whatever. He said the wrong name. Wrong he said the other day I had my kids. They're watching the movie, happy Madison, which is not the name of a movie. That's it's the name of his production, production company. company yeah. And just, he kept saying, and he's like, at one point he's like, Hey, Oh, do you have Netflix? <laughs> It's oh, like, God. Uh, yeah, I got Netflix. Just, it was, <laughs> so it, it is, and Bert talks about that all the time, about how that would being the worst interaction of his life. That's how I found it was him talking about how terrible it was. And when I watched that, so whenever I have a little gaffe like that or a faux pas, I go watch that four minute clip of, of goodness of him just, you know, oh, it's like a it slow out of train wreck. And then, and then, I, then I feel better. Everybody has The tonic those. to your quinine. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm better. Everybody has those moments. Yeah. Oh, I've had a couple. Oh yeah, you know a, a good way something something you should probably get in this in this market to prepare is if if you if you have trouble staying the track with getting yourself educated, or doing the stuff that we talked about today, or living an intentional life. If you have any trouble doing this stuff, get an accountability partner for this stuff. 
have somebody that'll, that'll keep you accountable that you can share. It's in the same field, maybe the same office, maybe a different company somewhere else. Get, get yourself the Ryan Holiday 366 days yes. of stoic wisdom. And I love you, that. You journal in it? Have Daily Book it? of Stoicism. Yeah, I have the book in my office. And you like write in the day, whatever? Oh, the Daily Stoic. Yeah, I have it in my office. No, where you write down your intentions for the day in the journal. I have an app. I have an app on my phone. Oh. I do it with I have an app called Journal. There's an app for that. There's There's an app app for that. Yeah. Don't you find the app can get overwhelming though? Everybody's everybody's solution is on an app. Then I have to go through my app to find out all the things my app can do. When they tell me you have to go online to do something, so I know. I I love the journal. I love the journal app. Do you you use it every day? It starts with it starts. It wakes me up in the morning because it knows what time I wake up because you tell it. And it starts out with let's make a great day, and it'll tell you you know you have to type out three things you're you're grateful for, and I really love it because you can also open your camera and take pictures. So like when we were at the wedding or whatever, is that we why you're North taking California. pictures of me in Cabo? Well, yeah, no, <laughs> it's because you're passed out and <laughs> grateful. <laughs> it's because you're passed out had a horse head mask on or something. <laughs> like that. One tight, a weird. But yeah, I I, lo- I love my little apps, and it keeps me on track. And then you can go back and look at things you're grateful for, and talks cool. about. But one of my favorite questions that I ask me every day is it says. If you could go back in time and change something that happened today, what would that be? And it's a great way to reflect on how you could have done something different or better, but also it's an opportunity to let those things go. My answer every day would be this meme that I've seen. They always say this, uh, if women had time machines, what they do back? What oh, they yeah, do. Yeah. It's the two guys. It's just no, it's just it's no, no, no. If if if, no, if women dude, had a time machine, they would go back and be like, "Oh my God, you're my great great grandmother," mm-hmm. right? That's who you'd go do. And for a guy, it's like you go back to the day before Harambe was killed <laughs> and just prevent it. Like every single I mean, thing I regret it's like is, is not being there at the Cincinnati Zoo or whatever <laughs> the day before Harambe was killed because that's what started this on the worst timeline we could possibly that, be that on. Was, that was the catalyst was, that day? Ask anybody. Ask anybody for anecdotal evidence and they will say <laughs> Harambe. Everything leads back to Harambe. Everything leads back to Harambe. I think you got to be honest with yourself too. I think that's why journal one is good. Because you're you're just putting it well, out there. You. You're you're it's honest you. with yourself. If yeah, you're not you. honest with yourself, you might as well stop what you're doing. I agree. What's for you? Well, guys, I hope you got something out of this that helps you today. Um, you know, as always, if you're watching us on the YouTube, please hit that like subscribe button. Give us a comment of anything you may have liked. If you're listening hey, you to us do. on whatever subscription based podcast service you're on, of course, a high review is always welcomed. Um, yeah, I mean, Streaker, iHeart Radio, whatever, Apple Podcast, whatever you're Google, listening to, Crankbox, whatever you mean. Crank listen to. No, there's a, dude, there's a million of them. Whatever, Voodoo, it is. Crackle. Yeah. We're happy, happy, <laughs> happy. Name, to have you. So, guys, remember, if you got to move, you might as well move forward. We'll see you next week. Con law. Hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up more and see what we're doing, you can always go to thejohngafford.com. Well, we'll share any links that we have things we talked about on the show, as well as links to the YouTube where you can watch us live. And if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, you can always follow me at the John Gafford. I'm here. Give me a shout.